everyone, my name is Kim. I am a registered dietitian nutritionist, a certified diabetes care and education specialist, and a certified nutrition support clinician. Welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to look at another case study. So for those of you that didn't see the first video I made with a case study, go ahead and look at that now. It is popping up right here. The reason why I'm doing these case studies is because your dietetic internships are about to start or have already started and a lot of hospitals are not allowing visitors to come visit at this time. So today I have a very interesting case to share with you. So let's just jump into it. So we have a 54 year old male with a history of type two diabetes and newly diagnosed with colon cancer. He recently underwent a partial colon resection, he has a colostomy, and he ended up having a post-operative ileus. Hypothetically speaking, the physician wanted to start the patient on a post-pyloric tube feed, but instead, because of the post-operative paralytic ileus, he wants to start him on parental nutrition and his GI issues are not expected to be resolved in 7-10 to 10 days. From reviewing the history and physical, you are told that he is 69 inches tall, he weighs 193 pounds, his weight history has been stable. The physician orders the patient to receive a parental nutrition providing 500 milliliters of 12% amino acids, 500 milliliters of 70% dextrose, and 250 milliliters of 10% lipid. As the dietetic practitioner, you are asked four questions by the physician. These are the questions. Number one, how should parental nutrition be initiated? Number two, once parental nutrition is infusing at the goal rate, how should you monitor it? Number three, when and how should parental nutrition be discontinued? And number four, which I think is the most important, how do you calculate how much calories and protein this parental nutrition infusion is providing? So these are very four common, uh, it can be complex but it doesn't have to be complex, questions that I answer on a daily basis. So let's look at the first question, how should parental nutrition be initiated? So before we jump and answer this question, there's a few things that I want to point out to you in case you didn't notice. And one of the most important things is that this particular client has diabetes. So if you do start a parental nutrition infusion on someone that has diabetes, you just don't want to come out the gate swinging. You want to start this parental nutrition at a very low rate. That is the answer. You want to start at a low rate because you don't want to, you don't want to cause any blood sugar spikes. Parental nutrition is rich in dextrose. You are giving parental nutrition intravenously. So you do not want to cause that blood sugar to go haywire, which can complicate issues even further because this patient just came from surgery and high blood sugars after surgery can impact healing. It's just a whole conglomeration of things that you want to avoid. So you want to start out at a very low rate and you want to increase gradually. So you want to make sure that the blood sugar is controlled before advancing and a good range for that blood sugar management is between 140 to 180 milligrams per deciliters. So the next question it was asking you about monitoring. Once the parental nutrition reaches the goal rate, how should you monitor or what you should monitor rather? So something that you definitely want to monitor is the fluids as well as electrolytes. And if you didn't see the previous case study, which is popping up in any one of these corners, I think it's this corner, uh, you want to go ahead and look at that. You want to look at everything that I mentioned there because it tells you what specific labs you want to monitor uh, for someone that is on parental nutrition or someone that may be at risk for electrolyte imbalances. So you want to monitor fluids and you want to monitor electrolytes. Additionally, something that is important as well, uh, this particular patient is not intubated. Uh, we weren't told that and we weren't told that they're on propofol, but propofol is important as well. If propofol is infusing at too high of a rate, you could put the patient at risk for propofol related infusion syndrome. So with propofol related infusion syndrome, something that I always monitor is the triglycerides. If my triglycerides are like nearing 500, then that's when I would recommend to the physician to, you know, let's, let's cut off the propofol at this time because of 
the possible propofol related infusion syndrome. Um, that's the parameters that they use at my facility. So um, something else that is good to know as well is that the pharmacist, the pharmacist is monitoring these things, well the clinical pharmacist. The clinical pharmacist is monitoring labs as well as the dietitian, so you guys can just simply tag team it. So let's talk a little bit about propofol related infusion syndrome. So it's a serious condition, it's actually a lethal condition, and it's characterized by uh, arrhythmias, acute renal failure, rhabdomyolysis, hyperkalemia, you can have cardiovascular collapse and unexplained metabolic acidosis. So you definitely want to monitor those triglycerides. The next question is when and how should the parental nutrition be discontinued? So you want, you just don't want to stop parental nutrition like that, bam, boom. Especially this patient has diabetes you can get rebounding um which you know the blood sugar dips and then it just spikes so you don't want to do that so you want to taper off and you want to start tapering off the parental nutrition when the oral intake or the oral diet is first advanced and then the intake meets at least 60 percent of the estimated micronutrient needs and finally the last question which i consider the, to be the most important question how many calories and protein is this particular parental nutrition providing so so we are told that this particular patient is receiving a formula that has 500 milliliters of 12 percent amino acids 500 milliliters of 70 percent dextrose and 250 milliliters of 10 percent lipids so to be honest with you i answered this question already in a video that i made and this video can be found on my rde my registered dietitian essentials blueprint it gives you the breakdown of the energy coming from the carbohydrates the energy coming from the protein and the energy coming from uh, the propofol to figure out if this is meeting the client's specific needs because yes a physician a nurse practitioner a pa can go ahead and order a particular parental nutrition infusion but does it meet the needs yes or no i know for me if the parental nutrition formula is not meeting the needs what i simply do i simply call my provider and i let them know like hey i recommend at this time go ahead and changing it to XYZ because then it will meet 90% or 95% or even 100% of the estimated macronutrient needs. So if you guys are interested in figuring out how to calculate the amount of energy that is coming from a parental nutrition, just follow that link below. As usual guys, thank you for watching. Please remember to comment, like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Have a good day. Bye-bye.